Hey y'all, I'm back with another informative video. I'm Joya and welcome to Fibroids and Friends, a little place here on the internet that I've created for my fibroid fighting sisters and our friends that love and support us. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are returning, thanks for coming back. I'm so glad to have you in service one more time. You know that around here, we like to get where? To nitty gritty city very quickly. So I promise videos that are 15 minutes or less and today will be no different. All right, so as you can see from the title, today I'm going to prepare you for your myomectomy. All right, here we are, we have fibroids, we wanna get them out. We have chosen to have an open myomectomy. So first thing first, y'all, do your research. Know what you're getting into. Know all the details about your fibroids, all right? You want to know how many do you have? What's the plan? Where are they located? You need to know everything that you can possibly know before you lay on that operating table. As a matter of fact, let's back up. First things first, you want to pray. And baby, you want to pray a lot. So literally all from the moment I found out I was going to do this procedure, I was in constant prayer. Like, you know, they say pray without ceasing. I'm pretty sure that's where I was. And when I got to the hospital, I literally was zoned in. It was, I was praying for the doctor, the nurses, their mamas, their daddies, their kids, the operating table, the lights in the room. I was praying for my husband, my family, everybody that was praying for me. Y'all, I prayed that fibroid out, okay? So that's first things first. You want to pray a lot. You want to be at the position where you know God won't bring you to anything that he won't bring you through and that you claim victory over that fibroid removal before you even get to the hospital, all right? And then second, you want to make sure education is on point. You want to make sure you've done all your research. You have asked all of the questions. You um, have no doubt of what the plan is. Um, usually when you get there, you do have to sign or even before you get there, you have to sign a paper saying basically in so many words that if they get in there and things get difficult, you may end up with a hysterectomy. OK, I think that's a liability thing that they have to give you. I signed it. I didn't want it, but I signed it. I don't think they would do the surgery without your signature there. So just be mindful and be aware that that is probably coming. So. Whether you chose the myomectomy life or whether the myomectomy chose you, either way, I know your brain is going through something right now. Um, you're basically about to have a C-section. And if you've never had a baby, which at that point I had not, then it's scary, right? The thought of someone cutting down where all your goodies are is, is frightening. I had had a knee surgery, a shoulder surgery, and that one still had me kind of messed up going into it because I literally just didn't know what to expect. So that's why research is very important to reach out to different people who's had this procedure. Holler at me in the comments, email me if you have questions. I'm here to help better prepare you for this procedure. So don't be shy y'all, ask questions, ask your friends, ask your family, ask your doctor. If you don't know what questions to ask, maybe you can start with some of these. Do I have any other options? Is the myomectomy for real what I gotta do and why? Is it because of the size? Is it because of how many I have? Ask the doctor, why is the myomectomy the best procedure here? What's the risk of this procedure? How will it affect your fertility? Um, what type of anesthesia would they be using? What type of scarring can you expect? Y'all ask all of the questions. As a matter of fact, I'm going to link an editable template, edible, Definitely can't eat it. An editable template that I made that has some of the questions that I ask. I'm going to give you guys access to that um, so you can add your questions as you think of them. Sometimes the best questions come when you're about to fall asleep or when you're folding clothes and you're somewhere where you can't jot them down. So as you think of them, you'll want to jot them down on this. So when you see your doctor, you're able to fire off, ping, 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 all these important questions um, and get answers before you agree to this procedure. All right, the next step is you want to prepare for your recovery. It is impossible to know in advance how you're gonna feel when you wake up from surgery, how you're gonna feel when you get home after the surgery. But I can tell you one thing, 
you will be in pain, okay? It's going to be hard to reach up, to bend down, to move side to side. So you need to literally prepare for your recovery before you have the procedure. Now, that can include making a lot of arrangements. You want to arrange for someone to be there with you when you wake up. You want someone to be able to drive you home from the hospital, to be able to drive you over the next couple of weeks to and from doctor's appointments and follow-up appointments. You need to make arrangements for your kids, for your pets. Um, you need to make arrangements for work. Um, any other commitments that you may have out in the community, you're gonna be out for four to six weeks. So you need to make sure that you have done your due diligence with work, with the insurance company, with all of your extracurricular things that you are covered when it comes to your recovery period. Speaking of recovery, you want to make sure you have everything you need at home ready to go. Groceries, medicine, um, your hair, y'all. Get your box braids, get your high bun, get your twists, whatever you need that is low maintenance because again, reaching up is not gonna be your friend. Make sure that any medicine, any things that you use regularly are on a level that you don't have to reach up for, you don't have to bend down for. It's not gonna be fun, y'all. You don't wanna stretch that incision and be in excruciating pain or risk infection. So get everything at a level in your house that um, is appropriate. Speaking of level, right now, I want you to pause the video and go see how low your toilet is. I find out the hard way. That's not something that I thought about beforehand. Y'all, some toilets are very low. So you might want to get something that you can sit on the toilet or something, a rail or something for your bathroom because, again, squatting will be hard. Bending will be hard. And when you do get to go to the bathroom, listen, you want to be able to get there as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. And you definitely don't want to have to try to figure out how to get down to that toilet seat if it's too low. Um... Something else, door dashing, right? So you got your groceries, but sometimes it's just easier to get people or door dash to deliver your food. If you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure you put a table or a chair or something outside your door with a sign that says, place food here. A lot of times right now, they are you know, putting food on the ground, which, ill, first of all. But again, you're not gonna wanna bend over to get that. Matter of fact, you might wanna get you one of those little picker upper stick things um because things will fall on the floor you may not have somebody there with you and you're going to want to pick them up i.e the remote control okay so again i'm going to give you guys that template and it's going to have a list of all the things that i used that were very very helpful you might hear baby boy in the background but such is life of a mom all right next follow the doctor's instructions Y'all, this surgery is not cheap. So between you and your insurance company, you're going to be paying a pretty penny for this surgery. So why not follow what the people are telling you to do? So that might be changing your lifestyle. They might say over the next five weeks, you need to eat this or you need to be walking every day. Whatever they say is best for you to do. It might mean um, changing your medication or not taking certain medications leading up to surgery. You might even have to fast the night before, I believe. I did have to do some kind of fasting um, eight or 12 hours or something like that before surgery. So whatever it is that they suggest that you do, it is in your best interest that you do it. All right, big thing that a lot of people ask about, packing. When it comes to packing for the hospital, I always say pack light, but pack right. You're going to be in the hospital anywhere from one to three days. And when I had my surgery, COVID was still very rampant. So I took a lot of things that I didn't mind leaving at the hospital, basically getting thrown away. So some old pillows and blankets. I just personally had this thing about bringing germs home from the hospital. So a lot of things I just left there for them to throw away, including some of the clothes. But if you're taking your good stuff, you want to make sure you have comfortable blankets, comfortable pillows, because... It's a hospital, they have very standard things that aren't the most comfortable for someone staying more than one night. You want to make sure you have a comfy nightgown. If you don't want to keep the hospital gown on, it needs to not touch your incision, so it needs to be flowy, something that's probably a little bit too big. Um, if you're gonna end up wearing pants, you want to make sure they can come above your incision site. I say get something that comes up pretty much to your, to your boobs because even though a 
horizontal incision may be the plan, they might get in there and have to do vertical. So you need something that can come up above that vertical incision and be comfortable and not sitting on top of your incision site. Um, slide in shoes. Once again, you're not going to be able to bend over to Velcro, to tie, to buckle. Slide your feet on in there because you will be forced to walk. Literally, if your surgery is early in the morning, you probably will be forced to walk that night. If it's in the evening, first thing in the morning, you got to get up because you got to get things moving back in your body. So who wants to be barefoot? Who wants to try to um, have somebody else put their socks on? Which, if you have that, um, great. But you want to be able to slide on shoes and get moving. Again, you're also going to want those sliding shoes for the shower because, again, ew, all right? Um, extra long phone charger. You never know how close the bed would be to an outlet. So make sure you have an extra long charger for your phone. Um, night before, you might just want to hook up your iPad, your phone, whatever, and just be able to get your mind off of things. So you want to be able to have your phone accessible. And people will be trying to contact you or whoever's there with you to check on you, pray with you, and make sure that you're all good. So keep your phone charged. And something that really helped me, and I'm going to link it down below, is a seatbelt pillow. So they have these seatbelt pillows that are made for people um, getting these type of incisions. Because baby, when you get in the car to go home after the surgery, you're going to feel every speed bump, every hump that hump, everything on the way home. So this keeps that rigid seatbelt from being directly on your incision. And it just slides right on through and it's very comfortable. I actually used it after my actual c-section when i had my baby and um it's it's it works it's very helpful very cheap and i will um put it down in the description in case you would like to get it lastly y'all you want to prepare emotionally this is a physical procedure but it's gonna mess with your mind just a little bit or a lot bit surgery can be emotionally taxing especially this kind of surgery because all of the what ifs, all of the um, scenarios, all the things that might have happened to other people, you're going to be thinking about all of this as you get ready to lay down on that table. So if you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody, a therapist, a counselor, a family member or friend who's been through this. Again, you can contact me. Um, there's an amazing Facebook group that's made for women with fibroids. Y'all get in there. That thing kept me sane. It's so many stories of so many wonderful women and how they um, prepared for their surgery, how they recovered. Questions on questions on questions. You can get into the search box, type in myomectomy. Y'all, something a mile long is going to come up. So get with that Facebook group. I will actually link the name of it down below. Um, or at least put it down there. Not sure if I can link it, but... Talk to whoever you need to talk to to get your mind right before you go into this procedure. And this is also a great place, again, to remind you to pray a lot. Because if ain't nobody else listening to you, if nobody else feels you, the Lord does. So, again, stay in prayer. And it's, it's going to work out, y'all. It's going to all be okay. And one day, you'll be here giving advice to somebody else on how you overcame your myomectomy. So my clock says 13 minutes, 15 seconds. We sped through it, but I hope I have been able to better prepare you at least for your procedure. I'm excited to hear in the comments how it went. Please keep me engaged with all of your fibroid questions, your treatments, your symptoms. I want to know because as you may know from previous videos, I had a myomectomy and guess what? They're back. So here I am on my second fibroid journey. I plan to take you guys with me. Not sure what my next steps will be as far as treatment. So I'm excited to kind of take you guys along this ride. And I am hopeful that you would take me along your ride as well. So don't forget my editable checklist template will be in the comments. So please, I put down some of the things that helped me. Feel free to delete my things and add your own. Um, but it is very helpful to just have a list, have it written down, have it very easy to get to when you go to your doctor's appointments or when it's time for you to prepare for your surgery. All right, that's it. That's all, y'all. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.